everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, and today we are talking about a very important a thing. Jimmy Bob James, thank you for the sub. That's going to ruin the intro. So Yu-Gi-Oh is a game with a 10,000 card card pool. Um, every card that's ever been printed, with the exception of the things on the Forbidden and Limited list, is currently legal in Yu-Gi-Oh's only supported format, unless they ever decide that they actually should invest in Time Wizard. As a result, it can be very daunting uh, to build a deck, and frequently, decks are built out of only the best of the best, the cream of the crop, the cards that are absolutely good and usually released in the last couple of years, as Power Creep pushes better strategies to the forefront of the Yu-Gi-Oh mind space. But every so often, a dog water card from like four decades ago becomes a top tier meta threat. And it's usually because the stars align in a very perfect way to make a card like Dark Witch playable. So today we're going to be going over some of the worst cards to ever see serious metagame contention. A group of cards I will be referring to as penis cards because they're so penis bad. So first up is Dark Witch. This was very, very popular in exactly Extra Deck Monarch, a deck that existed in 2016 during the NAWCQ format. That deck had the ability to use Brilliant Fusion to send a Gem Knight Lady, what the fuck is the name card? Gem Knight Lapis to the graveyard, which would then add a normal monster from your graveyard back to your hand. Now, if you opened both Brilliant Fusion and a Return of the Monarchs, if you tributed over the Seraphonite, you could trigger the return with your extra normal summon and continue your plays from there. Dark Witch was the best over four star normal monster that you could play because the monster you were tributing over was a fairy, meaning you could play it under both Rivalry of Warlords and Gozen Match. Dyer says, remember when people were playing Beta in Ad Emancipator for some reason? I am honestly not sure why they did it. Uh, this one I actually know the reason for. Um, it's a normal monster that is four stars, which means that it's part of Gallant Granite, and you can summon it off of Unexpected Die. It is a rock monster, so it turns on your Ad Emancipator Researcher in the hand. Um, but down here, uh, Jaxel is absolutely correct. It got worse when the Meme Lords came to the conclusion that the extra attack points actually didn't matter. And uh, the sheer psychic damage of dropping the Statue of Easter Island was a little more impressive. This card is ass. Shock Troops of the Ice Barrier. Oh, God. This was used in Shadows for a while because it outed the Jin Lock. If you're unfamiliar, Jin Releaser of Rituals prevents your opponent from special summoning while a ritual monster that used it as material is on the field. So this was a way to pop that monster as it can destroy a face-up water monster on the field. It pluses you by adding an ice barrier monster from your deck to your hand. And it's a water, so theoretically in Shadow you could use it to summon a Noilidus. The problem is, if you were Necroz, you were also playing Shock Troops to do exactly that. Oh, God. Speaking of cards that out the Jin Lock, Bull Blader. This is a normal summon four-star monster, 1600 attack. When an attack is declared involving this card and opponent's monster, just crack that sucker. Pop the sucker to death. It was a way to out a monster that had a gin underneath it, and that was good enough for a lot of people. This was far and away the funniest thing you could do, though. Uh, you could decide to play, as your light monster for Construct, Winged Karibo, because there's a card called Sabatiel, the Philosopher's Stone, which, if you have a Winged Karibo in the graveyard, allows you to pay half your life points to add a poly or a fusion spell from your deck to your hand. I think people were trying to get, like, exactly Shadal fusion, I, I think that you could also search Super Poly with this card as well, but I, I don't remember how that worked. I topped a YCS with this, and no, this is not a joke. Okay, so obviously Mount Fuji, a.k.a. 2020 MBT Player of the Year CSM Champion, has topped many YCSs with many very bad cards, but non-aggression area is actually kind of strong. Uh, you can only activate this card during your standby phase. Discard a card from your hand to the graveyard. Your opponent cannot normal, set, or special summon during the next turn. And that's sort of cracked. In a game where you're actually getting to turn four. Oh, fuck. This is cracked in Labyrinth, isn't it? Uh-oh. This has two printings ever. I'm literally ordering it right now. And they are on their way. Yes. Drytron, for a short period of time, was trying to find a way to make Beatrice. Uh, they were playing everything from, like, malicious to uh, all manner of disgusting six-star techs. This is the worst of them. The number one penis card, Soul of Purity and Light. You can banish two light monsters from your graveyard to summon this six-star monster. What's going on in this picture? Is this man getting a handy from a angel? 
you decide. I don't remember who, but some people hyped this thing during Ruler's format. Oh, some people. A ton of people hyped Pokey Draco during Ruler's format. Uh, Pokey Draco, I think if it's sent to the graveyard, lets you summon from your deck a Pokey Draco, right? The theory behind it is, oh my god, think of all the dragons. You could just keep having dragons! Fodder for your rulers! In reality, the best way to get dragons into the graveyard was the hand effect of the babies, but uh, Pokey Draco remained exceptionally hyped for, I mean, months after the rulers came out. Inner Space Druid, I don't know if you're in chat, I'm just gonna ask it. Was it Gishki? Because if it was Gishki, you're blocked. The effect of Necro's Kaleidoscope to summon Unicorn Valk. This isn't exactly a penis card. Any card with 12 stars will do, but this is definitely the funniest one. Poison Draw Frog. Terrible fucking card. But it says Frog. So, this was playable for multiple formats, uh, both as an equip spell to um, Sea Lancer and as a combo finisher for Frog FTK because you could activate the effect of Swap Frog to send it from field and it would not miss timing. One of the very few times that it could actually do that. How often did people get the draw effect with this card? Frequently, as long as it was the last thing you were doing in Frog FTK. Fond memories of people trying to break magical hats. You Zoomers don't understand how good you have it. Foolish burial goods, bah! Back in the day, there was only one way to get spells and traps from your deck into the graveyard, and it was magical hats exactly. And boy, did people play it. I remember playing Magical Hats in UA to get Penalty Box in the graveyard. I remember playing it in Klee to get Sacrifice into the graveyard. I remember playing it in Paleo to just put a shitload of Paleos into the grave. I think the reason that Foolish Burial Goods was printed is Konami saw us doing that and went, ain't no fucking way. Fuck you, dude. This is not a penis card. Elemental Hero Neos Alias was good for a decade. What is wrong with you? Oh my God. From 2009 to 2015, this card was playable in all manner of hero strategies because it's a four star, it's light, it has a really advantageous name, even without the Gemini effect, it plays well with Spark, with Hero Blast, with Stratos. Oh my god, Neos Alias, a penis card. Don't make me laugh. Gem Knight Garnet, this is the original penis card. Uh, just a misery of a monster. Four stars, 1900 attack. Uh, the best possible normal gem knight. And for that reason, part of a brilliant fusion engine that if you drew was just completely offline. There was a time when this was like a $15 card. And this isn't the only card that you can play that fulfills the same conditions. There's a ton of other gem knights that are just as good but this one had 1900 attack. So in the corner cases where you'd normal this thing, it was slightly better than setting a 2100 defender. Vlad says, I topped a regional playing three of this in Monarch because you could summon it off of Idea. No, you couldn't. Oh, oh man. Oh. Yeah, we were down bad when Tour Guide was semi-limited. So if you're unfamiliar, Tour Guide from the Underworld summons a level three fiend type monster from your deck. There was always an argument as to what fiend monster you wanted to summon. It can summon itself, but when it was at two, you wanted to play another card so that the first one could summon the other tour guide or like a Sangan and the second one could also be live if you drew it. Many people decided that they wanted to play two tour guide from the underworld, one Sangan, one uh, Knight Assailant, but this was also in contention. Possessed Dark Soul. Three star fiend, offer this face up card as a tribute. Offer to take control of all face up level three or lower monsters on your opponent's side of the field. When the fuck are you gonna do that? In reality, the best thing you could play is, um, nothing. Don't play another target for tour guide. Yeah, this is kind of whack. Um, Cabazals is, is a decent example. Uh, so when Dino Rabbit was a big deck, uh, Rescue Rabbit needed some dinosaur to summon from the deck. And of course, the top pick was Sabersaurus. Uh, that card is a 1900 four star, decent on its own. Cabazals is less good. A 1700 attack four star monster that clogged up your hand like nobody's business and $10 per playset during Dino Rabbit. Imagine spending $10 on this. Exordio, you're speaking my language. Pianissimo. Quick play spell card, target a face up monster you control. This turn, that face up monster's original attack becomes 100 
Also, that face-up monster cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. When were people playing this? I'll give you a hint. There was a card that was doing a lot of destroying by card effects. Zodiac Format. You would slap down a Dryden, your opponent would Dryden your Dryden, and you'd Pianissimo. In fact, you kind of had to play cards like this because Dryden to your normal summon was so good in the mirror. Oh, God. Yeah, this is, this is a modern penis card for sure. This is a modern penis card. Prohibit Snake. Uh, this card, if your Cybers monster battles an opponent's monster, allows you to return that monster to the hand. You would play it in Salaman Great, so your normal summon could trade with your opponent's Shadal Winda. Miserable card. Though technically searchable off of stuff like Cyanet Mining. Shouts out to the Hazy Flame community for main decking Taihone 2 for a while. Okay, so like, that is not tournament play, but I will accept it because that's very funny. Taihone could kind of get it. Holy shit. Do you think he gives the six star suck?